Peplink's UBR Plus, a fully redesigned mobile router is here. Now this little guy's got dual cellular modems, which means that it can connect to two cellular networks at the same time. They've upgraded this to category seven, meaning it has coverage for key bands for AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile, making it a really, really interesting choice. What's more, they've gotten it to a very aggressive price point. Come along with us and we'll tell you all about it. Now, as I get this ready and unboxed, I wanna give you a kind of a sneak peek of what we're gonna cover later in this video. I'm gonna give you a quick overview of Speed Fusion Connect. Speed Fusion Connect, uh, formerly known as Speed Fusion Cloud, is a technology uh, unique to Peplink products that allows you to do something called SD-WAN bonding, or the ability to connect multiple internet sources together into that single unified connection. The UBR Plus is a dual modem capable device, not to be confused with dual SIM. A lot of people think that if they pick up a lower end device of a Peplink uh, you know, manufacturer, that it's because it has multiple SIM card slots, that means you can use them at the same time. That's not always the case. If you hop over to mobilemustapp.com and you scroll down on the listing page, you'll see that they will say single modem device or dual modem device or multiple modem device depending on the device you're looking at. And that will tell you that not only do you have multiple SIM card slots that you can switch between, but in certain cases, like with the UBR Plus, you can use multiple connections at the same time. In the UBR's case, we also have a WAN port or a wired internet port that can also be combined with those cellular connections. Now a WAN port can be very important for folks that might have an external internet source. Uh, a lot of our customers utilize Starlink and they connect Starlink to the UBR Plus. A lot of our customers also might utilize a uh, cellular data plan for a third connection. Some folks use the uh, T-Mobile uh, home connection. That works great as well. And you can connect that up to the WAN port to give you three simultaneous internet connections when you combine it with that embedded cellular modem one and two. Up until now, a dual modem device from Peplink has been north of well, you know, $1,000, so a big investment. This is a departure from that. This represents the first device that's under a $1,000 price point out of the box that gives you that dual modem capability. We'll get into this more in a bit, but what's even more impressive is that Peplink has also improved the router throughput on this device from some of the previous generation's UBRs significantly, like seven times faster. So this device not only is dual modem, but it's got a faster processor and a faster, uh, I'm sorry, and more memory, which makes it capable of providing up to 900 megabits of router throughput. That can be very important as these new cellular networks get faster and faster, or if you're looking to connect up an external internet source like Starlink or something else with that WAN port. Moving on to the unboxing of what we see here, uh, Peplink has updated their their, mar their box and their marketing to the, to the newer style that kind of was debuted with the BR1 Pro 5G. That's a nice bit of packaging. Inside of the box here, we have four cellular antennas. These are two decibel gain cellular antennas, uh, pretty common with Peplink devices. To give you guys some backstory though, two decibel gain antenna will equal roughly 100% gain in cell signal. So a lot of our customers, most of our customers report that if they put this next to a MiFi hotspot with no external antennas or their cell phone being operating in a, in a hotspot configuration, this will typically show uh, significant improvement in cell signal, cell signal strength. I usually hear them talk about, you know, at least a bar of improved signal strength and significant improvement in the actual usability of the internet as a result of those antennas. In addition to the four cellular antennas, we have two Wi-Fi antennas. This unit has Wi-Fi 5 technology, so you have the ability to operate this device in 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz or mixed mode Wi-Fi with Wi-Fi 5 technology. You have the uh, GPS antenna here, some branded wire management cable, the router itself, of course, and a uh, AC power adapter with the four pin um, 
micro Molex connector as well as a quick start guide that will primarily tell you how to connect up all the antennas as well as how to get into the administration console. Peplink is continuing to use this modernized chassis, uh, which is great. It does a great job of dissipating heat because it has these integrated heat sinks at the top, uh, and it's quite uh, slim and easy to mount. Uh, dimensionally wise, obviously, if you look at the documentation tab in the listing page, you'll see all of the specifications, but giving you a rough overview on the long side here, you're looking at just under seven inches. On the shorter side here, you're looking at just under six inches, probably closer to seven when you add the antennas. And then at a height perspective, you're looking at about an inch and uh, a little under an inch and a half. It's about, I think it's 1.4 inches, but you can check out that specification tab for the exact numbers. Giving you a quick overview of what you see here on this side of the device, we have an integrated four port ethernet switch. We're super excited about that. Those are gigabit LAN ports, one, two, three, four. That means that we can connect up wired devices to this unit without having to add an external switch. Uh, some of the previous generation models had one, maybe two ports. Um, so the UBR has always been something that's kind of known as kind of the the all-in-one, the sport utility vehicle, and they're keeping up with that by keeping that integrated four port switch. We've got our WAN port here that we covered a little bit before. That's our internet in port. And this is an assignable WAN port, meaning we could technically use it as a fifth LAN port if that was something that you needed to do if you weren't using it for an external internet source. We have our standard complement of status lights over here. Our top light status will be red when the device is booting up or if there's a problem. It will be flashing green when it's in its final boot up stage or solid green just about all of the time uh, other than that. You've got your cellular one and two lights below that. Cellular lights will be off if the modem is disabled. They will be flashing green if they're trying to connect to the cellular network and they will be solid green if they're connected. That gives you a really nice quick overview if you're curious what the status of your internet connections are without having to log into the administration console. Uh, continuing on, we've got our four pin uh, power plug here. Uh, the lower two ports which are labeled are for your your uh, DC input power, and then your upper two ports are available for your ignition sensing or GPIO um, uh, availability, which is a feature in this router. On the outermost sides of the, the this device, we've got our Wi-Fi antennas, and that's for our local internet at, or our local Wi-Fi networks, not our cellular networks. Uh, that's the Wi-Fi technology, Wi-Fi five technology we talked about earlier, and you've got that dual band two by two Wi-Fi, so that you can support quite a few wireless clients. Lastly, on this side, we have our reset button right here, uh, our paperclip reset button that allows you to do a couple things. Uh, probably the most common thing is to hold it down for 15 plus seconds, and it'll fully reset the device if for some reason you need to reset it. But you can also hold it down for less time between five and ten seconds and it will reset the admin password on the device if you ever forget it so there's a nice touch there you can check out an article on how all of that works at support.mobilemusthave.com let's check out the other side on this side of the device we've got our modem one cellular one and two antennas and our modem two cellular one and two antennas so four cellular ports in total. And down here we have our GPS antenna that can uh, provide GPS information and data via the InControl2 cloud-based management control interface. Kind of like LoJack, you can um, track the vehicle. Um, that's also very popular for folks that have fleet vehicles or need to do large device tracking. We even have some customers that are bloggers that use this data via downloadable files in InControl to update their followers on their travel experiences. GPS functionality can be disabled completely via in control um, as well as all cloud-based management functionality if you're interested in not having that feature available. I'm going to go ahead and unscrew the dust cover here for the SIM cards. There it goes and show you that next. We'll give you a close-up here but you've got four SIM card slots. The left two are for modem one and the right two are for modem two. Uh, the newer style devices like this one are using nano size SIM cards. So the smallest possible SIM card available, which is nice, no more losing uh, SIM cards in big slots, which we're very happy about. And it utilizes the standard architecture spring loaded SIM in and out functionality that we can show you a close up on uh, where 
um, SIMs are easily inserted and ejected with the push of a button. Quickly, we like to cover how SIM cards operate in these devices. Uh, your notch, which is kind of the corner of the SIM card, we'll show you right there, will always go in first. And the metal part of the SIM will always face towards the other SIM slot. So if you're using slot A, it will the metal will face towards slot B. And if you're using slot B, the metal will face towards slot A. Uh, some people get confused by that. If you push that in and you receive kind of a hard pushback and it's not spring loaded, that SIM card is likely not installed properly. So make sure to check your orientation. Moving on to the modems for a minute. The category seven modem is a big step up from previous generations. If you have an integrated cellular technology product in your RV or marine application that came from the factory, it may have a category six or a category four modem in it. That's pretty common. Category four is pretty common. And what the categories essentially mean is the amount of available channels that you can connect to up to the cell tower. Channels are commonly known as cell bands or bands. They're kind of blocks of frequencies that the cellular carriers own to allow your devices to connect to the cellular networks. And a big problem with some of the devices that you see pre-installed in RVs, unlike this one, is that they don't have access to a lot of the latest technology and bands to allow for the coverage that you see in all those TV commercials kind of touting these amazing coverage maps. The Category 7 modem inside of the UBR Plus gives you a couple things. First, it gives you access to band 14 that is previously not available in category four or six modems. Band 14 is AT&T's rural band. It's actually kind of referred to as their first net band that was originally rolled out for first responders as part of a partnership that they had or a contract that they had with the federal government to give rural access for first responders. Now, band 14 on AT&T can be used by the public according to AT&T, and we've confirmed this multiple times as have our partners at the Mobile Internet Resource Center um, at when the first responders are not using it. So band 14 dramatically increases rural coverage for AT&T. If you're interested in learning more about band 14 and FirstNet, you can hop over to the listing page and scroll down to the section that covers FirstNet. Category seven also gives you access to two key bands for T-Mobile. The first one is band 66. That's kind of like a, a big workhorse band for T-Mobile. Um, it operates in some of the higher spectrums, but it's, it's where a lot of their network coverage comes from. So band 66 is super important. Again, not something that was included in category six devices. Um, in addition, you're getting access to band 71. Band 71 is T-Mobile's rural band, and that operates at a lower 600 megahertz frequency, allowing it to go very, very far with fewer towers. That's how T-Mobile has been able to roll out these expansive coverage maps and kind of become one of the big players in the cellular industry in such a short period of time. So band 71 is super important as well. To learn more about band 71, you can again, scroll down on the listing page and we've got a section there labeled band 71. In addition to the bands that it has access to, they've also dramatically improved the upload speed of the modems for this device. So previous category six, I won't even talk about category four, but category Category six had a max upload speed of 50 megabits per second. With category seven, you're increasing that three times to 150 megabits per second. And on the download side, you get 300 megabits per second of max download speed per modem. So it's quite a fast device. Talking about router throughput or speed for a minute, this device uh, actually borrows its processor from the Balance 20X device. Um, I'm very happy about that. They've kind of brought in a mid-level processor that was faster than previous generation processors and allowed them to keep such an aggressive price point. What that means is we have 900 megabits of max router throughput in that device, which is quite a bit. Uh, in addition, if you're going to be using Speed Fusion Connect, or formerly known as Speed Fusion Cloud, your connection speeds for an unencrypted Speed Fusion tunnel will be 100 megabits per second, which is quite a bit of speed for SD WAN applications. Um, and if you encrypt that traffic, you're looking at 60 megabits per second, still more than enough for everyone in your RV to enjoy that Speed Fusion tunnel uh, without, you know, 
your kind of average activities for work and play bumping up against those limits. I do want to cover on the DC power side that this unit will accept between 12 and 30 volts. So it will work in 24 volt DC applications, which is very nice. And of course, mobilemusthave.com has direct wire fused DC power cables available on the listing page in addition to the included AC adapter. The UBR Plus also is set to have the AP controller feature added very soon. It did not ship with the AP controller, just like the BR1 Pro 5G didn't ship with the AP controller, but they released it in a uh, I think it was in about 60 days from release. I suspect it's going to be even faster on the UBR Plus because they've worked out how to add that feature to routers very easily. What the AP controller will do is allow you to add external secondary access points and control them or configure them all from the central management console of the device. That's gonna come in super handy uh, if you're interested in adding additional coverage, if you wanna set up um, maybe an access point that supports Wi-Fi 6, if that's important to you. Typically in an RV application, Wi-Fi 5 or 6 will, will work just fine for anybody, but some people want the latest and greatest, so you can add Wi-Fi 6 using, I'd recommend the AP1AX Lite. Um, access point. That's a great little access point that supports Wi-Fi 6. It has an extremely powerful radio. But the point is you can control that inside of this device using the AP controller. But just to note, on day one, it's not shipping with that. It will come in a future firmware release that is coming very soon. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hook this device up with all of its antennas. Then I'm gonna head over to my desk and I'm gonna give you guys a quick demonstration of just how easy it is to set up Speed Fusion Connect and get yourself connected with multiple cellular or any connection, internet connection, could be Wi-Fi, WAN from a campground, could be a wired connection uh, to the WAN port from a Starlink like we mentioned before, or just about any, uh, internet connection and combine it with uh, whatever other internet connections you have. So in this particular demonstration, we're gonna show you uh, how to combine a wired internet connection, which we're gonna plug into the WAN port and a cellular internet connection uh, into this device uh, so that you can see three connections because we're gonna use both cellular modems all connected at once. Since I don't have a plug here, I'm gonna go ahead and plug this unit in using our optional battery pack and optional um, DC power connect cable kit that we have here. And that is something also available at mobilemusthave.com. So we are powering up right now. That's gonna boot up in a second. I'm gonna hop over to my desk and show you how this all works. All right, and welcome to my desktop. Now, in summary, we are gonna be going over how easy it is to set up Speed Fusion Connect, which is also known as Speed Fusion Cloud. That is the ability to combine multiple internet sources together into one single connection. Typically why that's important is if you need a more reliable internet connection, having more than one connection available will ensure that if one drops out, you can still remain connected. Now, before we get started, I do want to mention that this is a very high level overview to show you how simple this configuration is. But if you go to guides.mobilemusthave.com and you scroll down to the mobile internet guides and look down here for Speed Fusion Cloud, there is a detailed guide that gives you a lot more backstory of how the technology works, recommended use cases, and a step-by-step -step guide on how to configure everything. We're going to cover these basics right now as well, just for new customers to know that if they are thinking about purchasing a router like the UBR Plus, just how easy it is to get Speed Fusion Connect up and running. All right, so let's get started. Now, to begin, you have to access the admin console uh, of the router, which is typically at the address 192.168.50.1. At that same guides.mobilemusthave.com link, you will also see quick start guides or setup guides to get you through all of the basics. We're going to assume you have basic understandings of how to get to a router admin console, but if you don't, go ahead and check out those guides. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to drag in the connections that we want Speed Fusion 
connect to use. Uh, in this case, we are going to use the WAN connection, which in this case we'll assume is Starlink, and a cellular connection. I don't have a second SIM card here with me, but if we wanted to, we could enable that second cellular modem into the primary connection as well and have three connections. Uh, if I enable it right now, since there's no SIM, it will simply disregard this third connection as not available. Any connection that is in green will be used. Any connection that is in yellow is in standby, so that's not going to be used. And anything that's in disabled or grayed out will not be used. So make sure that if you want it to be used in the SpeedFusion Connect tunnel, that it is showing up as green on the dashboard. One other note before we continue, you may have seen that this is the PepWave Max Transit, even though this is a UBR video. The UBR uh, is here and working, but unfortunately my team has run away with my SIM cards. So I'm using this Max Transit for this demo. These screens are identical. It's one of the benefits of PepWave devices is they all run on the same operating system. So once you learn one, you've basically learned them all. So let's get started. All right, so we're going to hop up to the SpeedFusion Connect tab here. We're going to click a cloud location. And from backstory will be covered in the articles I mentioned earlier, but essentially uh, any type of SD-WAN bonding or bonding of multiple internet connections will create a VPN tunnel or a secure tunnel to a data center that allows the internet connections to be combined. More detail in the guide, but uh, for the purpose of SpeedFusion Connect, you're essentially hosting the second side of that tunnel up in the cloud with Peplink. They host that for you. That's part of the technology. You can pick the location uh, and typically you want the location of your cloud server to be close to you. That will improve what's called latency or you know, the amount of time it takes for your router to talk to the internet or the data center. I'm going to go ahead and select automatic. I think it goes does very well and it will automatically select based on the number of different United States locations, which one's closest to you and update accordingly. That's a good default selection if you're not sure what to do. I'm then going to hit the green checkbox here, and I'm going to hit the Apply Changes button here. All right. If we go back to the dashboard, we will now see that SpeedFusion Connect is enabling itself, and we will start to see um, SpeedFusion tunnels start to appear in this dashboard in just a minute. Now, while those are configuring themselves, as we can see here, the tunnels are starting up, uh, let's go ahead and create a wireless network that will be used by the SpeedFusion Connect tunnel. Now, the reason I like to create a wireless network that's dedicated to SpeedFusion is because I don't typically always want to use SpeedFusion. For example, certain traffic like streaming traffic or other data uh, may be something that I'm, I'm not necessarily interested in using SpeedFusion for. That is covered in greater detail in that article at guides.mobilemusthave.com. Um, for me, I use SpeedFusion typically when I'm getting on a Zoom call, a work call, or any other internet activity where I want a reliable connection. So I like to have a separate wireless network that I can simply connect to whenever I want to use SpeedFusion Cloud, and they make it very easy. So we're going to go ahead and hit link Wi-Fi to cloud. Then we are going to pick one of the existing wireless networks that's already in the router. In this case, this is a default unit, so there's only one. And I'm going to rename the Wi-Fi to something that I will know is always my SpeedFusion Cloud SSID. So in this case, I'm going to actually keep the same name, but I'm just going to write SFC after it for SpeedFusion Connect or SpeedFusion Cloud. I'm going to go ahead and hit save and apply changes. We go back to the dashboard here and it will be configuring that Wi-Fi network. And here's the original legacy one. In, in just a minute, a secondary one will pop up here and it will have a picture of a cloud next to it uh, with the new name that we just picked. And if I hop into my wireless settings on any of my devices, after about one or two minutes, that new wireless network will appear and anything that connects to it will utilize 
the Speed Fusion Cloud bonded connection that will utilize the multiple internet sources all in priority one. It is that simple. When I started in technology, setting up this stuff took practically a PhD, and now it is that simple. It's just a couple clicks to get it up and running. That's one of the benefits and beauties of what Peplink has put together in the Speed Fusion Connect technology. I'm going to show you one more thing before we wrap up the video, uh, and let's go ahead and do that now. We're going to go back over to Speed Fusion Connect, and we're going to click on Optimize Cloud Applications. And this is something that I'm going to do for Zoom. I use Zoom for my day-to-day -day calls with my team. And I'm going to go ahead and hit plus and save. Now what this has just done is this has told the router that if it ever sees traffic from Zoom, it will route it over the Speed Fusion tunnel regardless of what wireless connection that I'm connected to. This is a nice default override to create for any applications that are super important for you to make sure you're using Speed Fusion Connect on. There's quite a few default ones that you can see here from OneDrive, which is Microsoft, and um, Exchange Online, Office 365, really all of the key big workplace applications, Skype, which is Microsoft Teams. And this is a nice handy way to make sure that that traffic will always go over the Speed Fusion Cloud connection. I'm going to go ahead and hit Apply Changes. And then let's hop back over to the dashboard just to confirm everything looks good. And voila, there's our little picture of our cloud, our second Wi-Fi network. It shows our tunnel is established and connected, and these uh, connections that are in green will be utilized. In this case, my connection to AT&T and my connection to Starlink, which is on my WAN port. One last tip before we wrap up to kind of give you an idea of what our member exclusive area gives you access to. Let's go ahead and go into the Speed Fusion Connect tab. And we're going to go into Choose Cloud Location. I know we've already done this before, but I'm going to show you a little trick here to improve your speeds if you have internet connections that are uh, of differing speed. I'm going to go ahead and click on the name of our tunnel, which is the default Speed Fusion Cloud. And under Traffic Distribution, I'm going to change this to Dynamic Weighted Bonding. I'm going to leave all the other settings default. And if you want to understand a summary of the different policies or algorithms that this is using, dynamic weighted bonding is used for is using a different algorithm designed for cellular connections or really for just any connections that aren't identical. When SD-WAN was de developed, a lot of customers had, say, two cable modems or two DSL connections, things of that nature. And as we know, as mobile users, our connections can dramatically vary in speed and latency depending on our location. So by enabling dynamic weighted bonding in our Speed Fusion tunnel, we are telling the tunnel that the connection speeds for each connection, in the case of our connections being the WAN port with our Starlink and the cellular connection with our AT&T, are different. They're not going to be always the same. That dynamic weighted bonding will improve the overall performance and speed, typically, of the combined connection now that it knows you are using different connections. As mentioned, we just covered the basics here of Speed Fusion Connect. If you're interested in diving deeper, we cover things like custom networks, what to do about wired devices, not just wireless devices, setting up VLANs, setting up particular priorities, outbound traffic, all manner of things in our monthly webinars that we do for our members. So make sure to check out the memberships at membership.mobilemusthave.com. That gets you access to the forums where you can ask questions specific to your device, and it gets you access to those monthly pre-recorded webinars that we do with Chris and Cherie from the Mobile Internet Resource Center and myself to cover how to do more advanced stuff with PepWave and PepLink devices. Thank you guys so much, and let's head back down to 
the showroom. All right, folks, thank you so much for joining us on this overview video of the UBR Plus. As always, if you have any questions, you can hop over to mobilemusthave.com and start up a chat in the bottom right-hand corner, or you can email us at info at mobilemusthave.com. If you're stuck or you're thinking about a purchase and you want to talk to one of our mobile experts, we are available uh, anytime. We can schedule a conf consultation with you uh, easily. Just hop over to that chat and go ahead and schedule a consultation with us via chat and we will set up a phone call to get an expert on the phone with you to help you pick out the best solution for you. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on the road.